Unfortunately, people have thought most burnout was due to overworking. But no, it turns out the biggest, one of the biggest causes of burnout is actually feeling powerless at work. So here to expand on this hidden cause, career coach Sarah Vermont. Great topic. Great topic. There are so many people experiencing burnout at any given time, and I'm talking about friends, colleagues, partners, like you're, you hear about it constantly. Yeah. So this is a real, um, it's, I think it's a real eye-opener for people. Yeah. So you go away and you think to yourself, I've got parameters, I've made boundaries, I took some time, I'm into self-care, and you get back into the environment and you feel burnt out again. Yeah. So what's going on? Yeah, well, and people do that and they come back maybe after a nice vacation, they've got good boundaries and they're like, I can't seem to get it together, like I can't get my mojo back, what's going on? And for a lot of people it's because they're feeling a lack of control over things at work. A lack of control maybe over you know, toxic workplace relationships, the work tasks you're doing at work, mm -hmm. maybe even over like the actual trajectory of your career. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is a more emotional form of burnout. And for those of you who don't actually know what burnout is, it's kind of one of those words, it's like loosely defined. Yeah. It's physical and emotional exhaustion caused by chronic workplace stress. And we often overlook that emotional component, but it's a really huge thing for a lot of people. Okay, so you're thinking about it when you go home. Maybe you can't sleep very well at yeah. night. You're, like, your life outside of work has been affected by your feelings of work yeah. in an adverse way. Yeah. Okay, so you're feeling completely, <laughs> does somebody recognize themselves? So, there's that? a lot of nodding I'm going on here. here. Huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, um, can we talk a little bit about the toxic relationships? I feel yeah. like that's a big part of the equation. It's a biggie for a lot of people. What do you do about that? And well, maybe describe what a toxic relationship might be. Ooh, it can be many things. So for my clients, it ranges from like just like a toxic person that they have to work with or collaborate with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's even a client. It's really tricky when it's a boss or someone you're working closely with. Yeah. Um, and the way to manage it is to choose what feels like the safest option for you to address it. So I can't say one thing that'll work for everybody. Yeah. But you know, you have to decide, do I try and address this issue with the person directly? Mm -hmm. Do I maybe report to someone above them if it's gotten really mm. serious? You've got to be really careful and timing really matters. Mm -hmm. um, your emotional state really matters when yes. you do this as well. Um, I'm slightly embarrassed to admit that early in my career, I angry cried to a boss about <laughs> a colleague okay. taking credit for my work right. and my boss just kind of looked at me blankly and said oh. you know therapy's good for everybody oh. um, which was a little harsh but honestly I did all of my crying in an employee bathroom stall like a real grown-up after that before yeah. taking my yeah. issues to my boss so being in a nice calm state when you're addressing issues yeah. really helps because um, then it's taken more seriously Okay, so that's interesting. So you're in the moment, you're feeling it, the angry tears might be about to come, throw yourself in the cubicle, do your cry. Not the time, yeah. Yeah, do your cry alone, and then when things are better, more positive. They even say that with all your relationships, even with your yeah. partner, right? Yeah, wait Don't until you're Don't get into it when everyone's all heated. No. Wait till everyone's a little bit more calm. It's positive times, we like each other. Let's talk about this situation, yeah. and then you are more in control yeah, of it. Yeah, truly, it's the best way to do it. It's okay. hard, though, because you usually people wait until they've gotten to the point of breaking. Totally to actually address the issue. Totally. Yeah. A boss is a tough one, and I like that you say you, you do the thing that's safest, because yeah. it, and nobody's trying to be fired. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So you have to make sure that you're not pushing it to the point where you're gonna lose your employment, um, and also going above them might not be great either, because you might feel the pain of that on a daily exactly. basis, right? So you have to think about what works. Um, the, f the idea of feeling powerless in your work tasks, can you expand a little bit on that? Yeah, so people usually feel pretty crappy if they have no autonomy over what they're doing at work or if they okay. were in a job, but their job is kind of like over the years morphed into something else that mm -hmm. you don't really like anymore. Mm -hmm. For example, I have a client who was given a promotion that she didn't want doing work she doesn't enjoy and she yeah. went from being a top performer to burned out and having to quit her job in just a matter of months. Yeah. So you really have to speak up for the work assignments you want because if you don't, someone else will decide for you.
What if you get put in that situation? Can you still speak up? I think you should speak up, but I think you should be speaking up before you get put in that situation. Okay. Like, even if you're just feeling kind of blah about your work tasks, yeah. don't necessarily wait for a promotion to come up or something official to change. Ask someone about getting involved in different projects. Okay, so make it very clear what you want and what you don't want yes. before you even go there. Yes. So they're not throwing your name in there for something that you've already vocalized and said, this That's is not right. what I want. That's right, and it works best if you don't just say what you don't want, but yeah. if you're proactive about saying what you do want you as gotta well. you got to be positive, yeah. 100%. And that doesn't mean taking all of the crap, but it means being good about figuring out what you like and what you're good at and yes. what you can add to the company. Yes. Um, feeling trapped on your current career path? What can we say about this? It's a big one. So yeah. some people outgrow their jobs over time and some people outgrow entire industries. Right. And so when that happens, if you've outgrown your profession, usually people go through like a little period of denial before mm -hmm. they think about exiting. Mm -hmm. um, usually people are miserable for a couple of years or so and they realize that they can't just talk themselves into being happy on a path that no longer works for them. Yeah. So things aren't likely to improve in that scenario unless you do something about it. So maybe thinking about making a more serious change. Really good topic and that's why you see somebody like Sarah. That's right. Her whole career is getting you out of the career you shouldn't be in and into the one you need to be in. So I love your therapy girl. <laughs> Thank you so much.